So, I recently stumbled over this feature proposal for Godot on GitHub. Hmm, colored collision shapes. Uh, looks pretty cool. So, of course, I recreated them in Godot with GTScript. Okay, so I just realized while writing this that that intro would fit much more to a devlog. Which is a bad thing, because this is no devlog. Wow! So, first of all, what can my custom node do? It can have a custom color, have an image, be transparent, just like my friends, use stripe planner mapping, whoa, very fancy, and much more. What more? Well, I have no f but anyways, let me give you a small tutorial on how to use them. Create an object that needs a collision shape. Add a colored collision shape 3D as its child, and you're done. Pretty easy, right? By the way, did you notice the small icon I made? Pretty cool, huh? So here's a small rundown of how the code works. Uh, in the script it says record this live, so I'ma do that real quick. Okay, so yeah, let's go through the code. All the variables the node uses are defined here, with their doc strings. Then here are some internal variables. And if you're wondering what this is, this is basically the mesh that gets applied when there's no collision shape set. In the ready function we've called the function initialize colored collision shape. And what this does is it creates a visualizer mesh instance, we will look into that function in a bit, and caches that in this visualizer mesh variable. Then we add the visualizer mesh node as a child of the colored collision shape, but we make it internal so the user can't edit it. And then we create the visualizer material and cache that in the visualizer material. The create visualizer mesh instance function looks like this. We create a new mesh instance. We set a metadata for it so we can recognize it later. Then we disable shadow casting for it. And then we return the created mesh instance. The material basically works the same. We create a new standard material 3D and then we set the shading to unshaded, disable ambient lighting and disable receiving shadows and then we return that. And then the real magic with resizing and swapping out the meshes works in process. If the mesh and the shape are both not a null, we update the visualizer material and update the visualizer mesh transform. If the shape is a null, we set the visualizer mesh to the null shape mesh we created earlier. And if the image is not a null, we set the albedo texture of the visualizer material to the image. Here we check if the shape is not the previous shape and then we swap it out. This is where the whole mesh to the shape changing happens. So I have this function change mesh to and all it does is it takes a mesh as an input and then sets the mesh of the mesh instance to a new mesh and then sets the material of the new mesh to our visualizer material. And yeah, we basically check if the shape is a sphere instance for example and then if that's true, we change the mesh to a sphere mesh. And this is all hard coded, but I think it's pretty easy to change this up. And if there's no mesh, we change the mesh to our null shape mesh. And here we cache the previous shape to compare it to the new one in the next process loop to check if it has changed in any way. So yeah, these two functions here update visualizer material. Basically, we just make a bunch of if statements and check if the image or the color has changed or some of the transparency flags have changed and update visualizer mesh transform. This function sets the radius and the size and the height of the mesh instances to the adjacent thing from the shape. It's basically again a bunch of if statements and then we do some math in certain cases to let both the mesh and the shape match up. And yeah, that's basically it. I also added doc strings to the whole thing, so if you press F1 in the game engine and search for colored collision shape, there's even a little doc page for it. Do you know what color this is? Right, the color of the subscribe button when you haven't pressed it. So you better subscribe now, you 